I don't know if y'all y'all saw this clip, um, but it also made me kind of think of an artist like a Drake, who <clears throat> maybe last year I think a lot of his fans started to say to themselves, "Why is Drake always on tour?" <laughs> yeah, right. Because it is kind of odd. So well, hasn't that just been the last like year or two, or even it before that? Maybe about the last year or two. Yeah. But even even so, when you actually think about it. Drake has been on tour since I was in college. <laughs> not gonna lie to you. He took a break. Did has he, he took a break? Yeah. I don't know. He took a break. Yeah. But it sounds good. I remember the real big tour he was on before he took a break was the one with the Migos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the three amigos. Three amigos. Yeah, I remember that one. Then he took a break for a second. Yeah. But I do want to give a shout out to John Bellion. Hey. Um, he's an artist mm -hmm. and he was on a podcast recently. Giving it up. And he explained what his deal was. Uh, uh, was when it came to his music, his record label, oh, the splits, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of that. So mm -hmm. this clip, it is a two minute clip. If y'all ever want to stop, let me know when y'all want to stop. But I do kind of want to play this for the full scope of what it is. I got to a place in my career. We sold out ten thousand people at Jones Beach. I mean, it was like the height of everything for me, and it was right around the time I figured out how my Live Nation contract worked, and it was right around the time I figured out how my record deal actually worked. And how did that make you feel? It was like panic attacks. It was like, oh my gosh, if A plus B equals C, I'm never gonna pay this back. I'm gonna be on the road eleven months a year just trying to pay back Live Nation. They're getting everybody coming twelve ways, twelve times a Tuesday. Are you with Live Nation? No, I paid myself out of the deal, and mm -hmm. I had to pay twenty five percent extra on what they advanced me. So just to stop right there live nation anytime you've gone to a concert to see your favorite artist nine out of ten times live nation has been the a company part the partner they have been a part of that concert yeah. um, in conjunction with that venue. When you figure that out on the road and you're thinking, man, why did we buy 300 rolls of toilet paper? Why do we have to spend this much on catering every day? Wait a second, what? In my contract it says- Cause it's not their money. You yours. gotta spend this much on catering and it comes out of my pocket? Yeah. But then I have to pay an advance back? And by the way, the advance that you have to give me is only on hard ticket sales. So the concept's called peanuts, parking, and alcohol. When I sell out 10,000 people at Jones Beach, the person who buys a $20 hot dog, I don't see a dime of that. The person who buys $40 for parking, I don't see a dime of that and the person who buys $20 vodka and Red Bull I don't see a dime of that and then you advance me a million dollars and tell me I'm rich to then find out that you're making four million dollars a night it takes me 36 shows to pay back the one million dollar you advance me it's, it's a, a loan it's a it's fake a, loan it's a fake loan that it's like we're gonna give you a loan so you can make our money off of your creation and then it hit me oh my gosh they own all the venues it's a monopoly so then now they just want my body in this room so they can sell food and alcohol speaking of that um I just want to say you know during the day my nine to five i'm a journalist so last week i wrote an article but uh, reporting that the department of justice actually plans to sue live nation and break up the ties that they have with ticketmaster because they're like i guess they started this investigation like two years ago mm. and then now they have enough of them illegal allegedly illegally maintaining a monopoly in the live entertainment industry and this basically goes right in hand with what he's saying he's like they control everything, so like no one else even has a chance to like make money off of this type of live entertainment stuff because they own every like every venue that um you will plan your tour around. Like they own it. The Ticketmaster you can only buy through Ticketmaster, so it like ups get like uh raises every price. So it's just like getting too crazy. And the depart it's the Bar Department of Justice, so it's very official, guys. So we yeah. might we might we might be up right now. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a true monopoly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna make tons of money, and then they got me like schlepping around the United States talking about I want to be famous. So when you figure that out, Joe Schmo pays twenty dollars for a hot dog, and I don't see that. And if I'm only making my advance back on hard ticket sales, that means I have to sell out every single venue in order to not go in the red because I'm only paying my advance back on hard ticket sales. And by the way, they reserve the right in the contract to put the tickets on sale. So when when it's $100 a ticket and they do their summer blowout sale, the tickets are only $10. So instead of me paying back $90 a ticket, right before I go on tour, the they drop a John Bellion sale and the tickets are only $10. Wait, they literally, li Live Nation <laughs> literally just did that. Like literally in the beginning of May, they did a yeah. blowout sale for yeah. like a lot of... Whoa. True Monopoly. Okay. See, I don't know if this affects Drake though, because I don't know if Live Nation and Universal... I don't know if Universal allows for Live Nation to treat Drake the same as everyone else. When it comes to the tickets? When it comes to everything. I don't know if it applies to Drake, right. but I know it applies to a Meg Thee Stallion. Oh, yeah. And I think Drake is in his own stratosphere. I think it's Drake. I think it's Beyonce. Mm -hmm. I think it's Bad Bunny. Mm -hmm. I think it's Taylor Swift. I think Heavy that weights. is the, the Mount Rushmore of today's climate. Who of, I kind of can have a say. Yeah. yeah. I think those four are the outliers to the rest of the music industry. The Weeknd. 
But then I think, and and honestly, I don't know. Maybe I got to get a little bit more familiar with the weekend. Yeah. But those are the four where I'm like, they can dictate everything from yeah. what it is that they want to do, how they want it to look, where they want to perform, whatever. Right. I think everybody else is held to this. The Meg Thee Stallions, the Cardi B's, 21 Savages, the Lil Baby, the Gunners. Mm -hmm. I think they are slaves. <laughs> To this system, yeah, yeah. People have been saying this about their record deals all the time. Mm -hmm. Now there are venues that are separate from Live Nation, but it's like, is it what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Does it have the space? Does it have the capacity? Does this have or the a, production? Like, can they right, do? They know how the to do these shows. There you go. How's the production yeah. value on that side? So it's like they know what they got to do. But you're right; those heavyweights don't got to deal with that shit. Reggie, how did that article come across your desk? Um. Well, the way it goes, like in the morning, like just a on a day-to-day, -day, like, you have to see, like, what news is trending, what news is breaking. Sometimes I get things in my email, like, press release and stuff like that, and then you have to decide, like, what fits well with the site that day. Mm. Got it. And So that, it was, was, that was, like, I thought it was a good story, so I wrote it up. Got it. No, I think it's a phenomenal story because I think a lot of people, and one of the things that he said is, hey, I'm famous, but I still get to, you know, sell out these venues. Yeah. But if you really think about it, but and I'm if you really do the science, right? If you really do the science, <laughs> mm -hmm. Nobody would be purchasing a $20 hot dog in that venue if the artist wasn't there that night. Need the yeah. artist. For sure. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And the merch need and all artists. that shit. Trust me, I've been to Jones Beach by myself when ain't the artist there. Ain't, yeah, they need them niggas to sell them hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's abandoned. I think it's abandoned. Yeah, I think the yeah. venue that he's talking about, and shout out to him, because Alex and I are yeah. very close proximity Jones to Beach Jones Theater. Beach Theater. Yeah, man. Like, See Lil Wayne and a lot of them niggas over there. I saw Chris Brown there. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. the Migos there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. that theater in particular, mm -hmm. nobody they don't have foot traffic. There no. isn't anything else there that you can go to they to make money. Seats. They don't fix <laughs> there's no VIP section. Ain't no VIP. <laughs> <laughs> it's just bullshit. VIP is your eyesight. How flies your well eyesight? <laughs> how well can you see? That's your VIP. How, how Yo, that's you, hilarious. You get the same show you get in the front or you get on that on the top row. How well is your vision? It sounds it sounds decrepit. <laughs> you get oh, what de like, decrepit. Shit was these... Yo, what's that shit in Rome? <laughs> the dome. The dome, it's right? The dome. Damn, it's the just, Coliseum, right? Yo, it's, it's, just, a Coliseum. it's just bleachers yeah. and a stage. I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> literally all it is. Like a high school, like the Coliseum. <laughs> so for that venue in particular that yeah. John Bellion referenced, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like you aren't getting anybody to pay $20 for a beer if the artist is not there. And you know what it took for me to go there? And I live 15 minutes away, 20 minutes away. Oh, wow. It took Chris Brown to be there. <laughs> For you it, to actually go you there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it takes one of them once to yeah. get me to go there. Yeah. So the fact that these artists aren't eating off of every single aspect of this event is a travesty. And mm -hmm. it speaks it to, is. I don't even know if it's greed. I think it's an outdated system. I always like yep. to talk about this. This is one of those things, again, going back to my therapy sessions, I believe in updating your software. Mm. Not just your phone, not just your laptop, not just your iPad. But also you as a human, you need to update your software. I think parenting as a parent, as a friend, as a husband, as a wife, as a boyfriend, as a girlfriend, everything in life requires you to be, to keep up with the times. That therapy grow. working, boy. To, to grow. grow. That therapy working. You work. know what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> no, legit. Come on, like, now. You need to be able to Come update on, your software. That's good. Yeah. And the music yeah. industry, clearly, based on what he just said in that clip, is not updating. they aren't updating their the software, software because mm. they it benefits them. It doesn't yep. benefit me to say, hey, you know what, Chris Brown... You are doing amazing as an artist. You are out here. You are selling out venues. You know, everybody can't do what it is that you do. So we're going to give you a piece of every single hot dog that we sell. We're going to give you a piece of every single parking spot that you sell out because there is no parking without you. There is no hot dog being sold without you. You are the So we're going to give you a piece, right? Yeah. Instead, the outdated way of thinking is they think it's them. They think, oh, I'm the reason that you are here, so I'm going to take everything and you get a small piece. That's why I wish I would have seen what like America would look like if there was no capitalism. Really? Yeah, because these are things that I constantly think about. And it always comes down to the same common themes, right? Like these industries that have committed the same practices are just copying our government. Bro, why is it so deep for us to have a, make amendments on the Constitution? 
Something that was created in fucking 1800s, mm-hmm. they act like it's such a big deal. Like, to we touch don't, it. don't we have to? Like, right. Yes. It, as the times are going on, I think industries like the music industry, film, just just mimic it. Everything. Just that's, mimic that, it. That's like, kind of. Uh, no, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. no, you're fine. I'm going. Yeah. That's kind of what uh, Terrence Howard was saying. Yeah. About how, like, some of the math, the archaic quote unquote math that, you know, people of old years did. Or one used. plus one is old. Well, no, when he, when he was talking about the triangles, it was just an outdated system because yeah. he was basically saying no, there's nowhere in the universe that straight lines are formed. But, you know, to what you were saying, you're right. Like, yeah. like just imagine if we didn't live in a capitalistic country, how different. Like, let's be progressive. Be. Just imagine. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, but again, capitalism runs everyone subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Every business, every person. You don't even realize that capitalism that is fucking you up. Though, I ain't gonna lie. There you go. You see? I ain't gonna lie. There you go. That's that American shit. It, nah, nah. That's what let, we do. But hear me out. Though. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. If the capitalism hit for real, yeah. you could get to some shit. That's the problem. That Stay right there. That is the trick they tell all of us. So now we try to do that to get to that place while hurting others and letting mm-hmm. others not go forward. Davon's trying to be in the one percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fine though too. I think anybody should want to be in the one percent of anything, right? Mm-hmm. That means like you have separated yourself. It's just at what cost? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like with capitalism, there are losers. Mm-hmm. Somebody mm-hmm. has to lose. Like you can't be a yeah. billionaire without taking advantage of people. It's impossible. Yeah, it's literally impossible. You have to go take to get to that status and get more. But that's why I, yeah. I don't understand when people like be mm-hmm. bigging up mm-hmm. Ovenby. What you mean? <gasps> I mean, they're products of capitalism. They are. Mm-hmm. We love them. No, for sure. We love them, but they are absolutely capital. Uh, All products of it of that. is. Yeah. All of OD. it. And, OD. and unfortunately, the society, the government that yeah. we live in, like you have to, it's, it's one of those things where it's you either adjust or you die. Mm-hmm. It's either yeah. you conform or you die. 